Forgot my helmet. Sorry, guys. And my neck brace. Well, Alex, man, I guess, man, we know what a journey it's been to, to get back to this point and just to, to all the things you've had to deal with. So I just wonder, we'll be right in front. It's yeah. yours. <laughs> yeah, I guess, how good does it feel to just finally be at this point, to finally be at fight week and, you know, not dealing with all first the repercussions, then the build up and everything, and just being ready for a fight? It feels like a farce, man. It almost feels like a fable that wasn't going to ever come true. You know, one of those things that just kind of just made up. Um, I had a lot of obstacles just to get back here, and I'm super fortunate, super blessed. And that, that's been the theme of this camp because a lot of ups and downs from not being ready, my body not cooperating with me. Um, I think I just cut my PT too early trying to jump in for a fight that I was told that I wasn't ready for yet. Um, starting up another training camp and then – that one getting pulled from underneath me again and being told that Jan isn't vaccinated. I, don't, I think they were just saying that to just kind of get me to, to attack him, which I did. <laughs> so uh, they got me to take the, the bait, and uh, we had a pushback again. I was starting to think, like, I would never be back to another fight week. So I'm, I'm really blessed to be here. I'm super happy and thankful to be making this journey and this walk again and doing all this stuff with everybody because one day the music stops, and I think that's been the theme for me. It's... Um, here one day, gone tomorrow. So um, I'm blessed that I'm, I can make some pay-per-view points. That's going to be nice. And get to punch a guy I don't really like in the face and cement my legacy in uh, history. And, and that's what it's all about. We know physically what you had to overcome to get here, right? But I just wonder, like, how taxing or difficult the last 13 months have been for you mentally. You know, all for, you know, first coming out of it, you're trying to explain to everybody what happened. And explain, and then, then you're getting doubts and questions and, you know, people question your integrity and your character and all these things along the way. I mean, how difficult has it been for you, I guess, mentally to, to deal with all the noise? Uh, not, not too bad. In the beginning, I was trying to get people to understand. They were asking me, like, why I look like that. And then as I tell them, they shit on me. So I'm just like, all right, at this point, if you guys are going to make fun of me, I'm going to make fun of you. I'm going to take this and run with it. So people were saying they didn't like the way I handled it. I'm like, let's be, let's be straight here. I handled it this way because of the people. If it wasn't for that, again, the way I, I let the belt go in the octagon, I think that shows exactly how I felt about it. And even despite that, I felt like I was a champ when I beat Corey Sanhagen. The media said the same thing. We were the highest ranked guys. We should have been fighting for the belt. Not a guy coming off of a loss and not a guy who just beat a retired Uriah Faber. You know, Uriah Faber is great, but he did his work back in the day, not, not currently. You know, so for him to get a title shot, both those guys, they did not belong in that title shot situation. And we know how the UFC operates, you know. So at the end of the day is what have you done for me lately? And I felt like the champ going into that fight, so no one could ever tell me, uh, you, you're the most unqualified champion. I'm like, listen, dude, if you know what you're watching and you understand and follow the sport, then you know that I was the guy that should have been there the entire time. So it is what it is for me Saturday night. I get to defend my belt and uh, right the wrong, and my first title defense is Piotr Jan. So we had a controversial ending. The fight was going his way. I already admitted that multiple times, and people still decided to go over that. And it is what it is. So you harp at me, I'm going to do the same thing and just dish it right back. And uh, I like to have a little bit of fun with it. Nice. How much intel did you get for that first one, right? I mean, we know that you're saying, look, I'm a different guy now. I had surgery. You know, I made some mistakes. I'm different. But from your perspective, how much intel did you get in that fight that you feel is, is useful? I mean, did anything surprise you or anything? You're like, oh, now I know I can use that against you. Not really. I think Jan is a phenomenal fighter. I think he's great, but I just think I'm the best. And uh, if that's my off night and I can have an output like that and still keep pushing forward, even though he's hit me with his best shit, I mean, what happens when I'm on, just like all the other nights? You know, so um, the, most thing I, 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 the most thing I could give him credit for as his high guard is pretty well sound. But outside of that, it's like I'm, I'm hitting him with these shots that aren't meant to – really do damage just to keep him at bay and for him to overcommit and look for my takedowns. And I just wasn't able to drive through and do all the things that I normally do. So he's good. He's talented. He's got good reflexes, good instinct. Um, his trips are good, but at the end of the day, I think anyone, I legitimately think anyone who hasn't wrestled before could have did that to me that night. And people could say whatever they want. We're going to find out in a couple of days is either I'm full of shit or this guy really, really just had a nice highlight reel based on a guy that wasn't fit to fight that day. So um, that's the beauty of this sport, you know. So thankfully for him, he was dumb enough to uh, give me another opportunity, and this time I won't let him off the hook. At first, after the fight, it felt like the, on the back-and-forth banter was maybe just having a little fun, and then it seemed to get pretty personal. I mean, it's, it, has this become a personal fight for you? 
Uh, I mean, yes and no. I think the personal part is we both really, really want to win. He thinks he's better than me. I think I'm better than him. And uh, I think that's pretty much where it goes. Like, whether or not after this there's a handshake or a hug, whatever, um, or a grilling stare down afterwards, who knows? You know, I, I just think depending on how the fight goes depends on how this kind of ends up. You know, so at the end of the day, uh, I'm in here to be the best, whether it's Jose Aldo, TJ Dillashaw, Dominic Cruz, Rafan, whoever it is, Cheeto, all these guys. There's a lot of great competitors out there, or Pio de Young. So he's the guy in front of me. He's the guy I need to take out, and he's the one with the target on his back. I got, I got nothing to worry about. I'm the underdog. Everyone thinks I'm going to get smoked again. <laughs> I'm going to have the last laugh, and I cannot wait because I've been in this position before, and people, oh, he can't strike. Pedro Munoz, oh, he can't grapple. Um, it's Corey Sanhagen, he can't hang with him. He's too long. Uh, this, that, the third. Cody Stamen, uh, Brett Johns, undefeated. All these guys, you know. I'm not, these guys are great athletes, great competitors, but I've been doubted multiple times, and I always rise to the occasion. And I can't wait to do it again. Last thing for me, I guess I'll just ask, what will this win mean to you? Because as you said, you are already champion. I know that people say whatever they say, but you're champion. But what does this win mean? Does this feel like... You know, you did throw the belt down in the cage. So does this feel like the moment you really secure your, your legacy or your position? I think so. I think to the fans, I mean, for me, I think this just adds to that. I think the resume that I've, I've had during the time when people were hot and on these win streaks and I'm taking these guys out, I think that's what it's all about. I think people that follow the sport and they understand that, you know, I'm not fighting guys past their prime. I'm fighting guys who are on win streaks. I'm fighting guys who are finishing guys and all that. So... I think when you account for that, the body of work speaks for itself. And there's a reason why I do what I do, and I think is I'm, I'm a very tough puzzle to figure out. And if I get people down, it's usually not a good night. you know. So um, I think I get them down the way I did in that first round, and it's going to be a short night for him. I, I really do think that I'm going to climb his back like a spider monkey and uh, choke his ass out. Uh, right here. Um, You've been very honest about the first fight and very you know, sincere with your thoughts and all that. Was that difficult at any point to look at it objectively? I mean, a lot of fighters will admit they're to a degree delusional because that's how they have to look at their career and uh, you know hype themselves up. So to be that honest with yourself, was that challenging in any way? For me, no. I think when you do that, there's no way you can grow as an athlete, as a person, even outside of fighting. I think... You have issues in relationships and you have issues with jobs, like your work, work life, whatever it is. I think if you can step back and remove yourself, remove the emotion and just look at the perspective of what it is, I think it makes it a lot easier to kind of have those honest discussions and be able to break things down and, and analyze the situation. I think that's where I was at. So for me to be honest with the fans and be honest with my team, like I, I told the guys, watch the tape. Give me your feedback outside of what I told you, how I felt that day, outside of what I told you. What do you think I did well? What do you think I did bad? What do you think Jan did well? What do you think I, I, he didn't do so well kind of thing? And then we come to the table and we can discuss everything openly. And, and I tell guys, I don't want you to sugarcoat anything. Pretend we're not friends because I want the hard, honest truth. And that's how I operate with everything in life. And I think that's why I've gotten to this position in my life because I think a lot of people – they want it the easy way. You say something and you don't, they don't like the way you deliver the message. The message is still the same. You know what I mean? So if whether or not I said it really nice to kiss your ass or not say the entire truth, that's, that's, that doesn't help you. You know what I mean? So tell me straight. I'm a straight shooter. I want to know straight what it is. I, I got thick skin. You're not going to hurt my feelings unless the intent was to try to hurt my feelings. You know what I mean? So I think people got to kind of like harden up a little bit, you know? And coming off the back of that, uh, Piotr was here earlier, and he said Al Jermaine doesn't behave like a worthy rival and doesn't behave like a man. What does that even mean? Like, what does that even mean? Like, what, how should I behave? Like, you sit there like a freaking, like a brick and just don't say anything. Like, what, the, what? that's a man? I guess that makes you a man. I don't know. Like... I like to have fun. I like to enjoy my life. I'm enjoying the ride, so I'm sorry that he thinks the way I enjoy my life doesn't fit him, but no one's going to tell me how to live. No one's going to tell me what's a man. Like, a man's handling your, your shit and your responsibility, and that's what I'm doing. And Saturday night, I got responsibility I'm going to handle, and I'm going to handle that shit. And that's the way I, I respond to that. Aljo over here. 
to go by Piotr being in here earlier and saying things, he said that if before Saturday he and his team run into you and your team, it's going to be on, and essentially his team will take out your team. What's your reaction to that, and have you seen him this week so far? I, I have not seen him. I, I honestly kind of want to see him just to see what will happen. I mean, I'm calm, cool, collected, so it's – I, I go for the energy he's going to bring, you know. So if he if he thinks it's going to be on, then I I'm ready, you know. I'm I'm more than ready. I'm ready now. I'm ready Saturday. So if you really want to do something, I'm I'm right here. I'm in the same hotel as you. You can find me. I if you want, I can give you my room number, not to other people to show up at my door. But you know, um, so it is what it is. I think he's just talking shit. It's uh, it's cool. I feel like I I feel like. I feel like we're good rivals. I feel like we probably end up fighting again, and um, depending how this fight goes, I smoke them. What, what are people going to say? What are people going to say if and when I smoke this guy? Is it more about proving the doubters wrong or about proving yourself right? What, how, does, how does that sort of balance out in your mind? A little bit of both. It's a little, a little sweet to, to kind of stick it to people a little bit, you know? kind of rub it in their faces. People did it to me. And um, when I do it back, I just hope people can take it the same way I had to take it for 13 months, you know. So um, I, I'm, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to just end this chapter and move on to the next one. You know, I got a lot of guys that I want to take out. And uh, Piotrion is, is a big one. People rate him super, super highly. And he's either going to look stupid or I'm going to look really stupid. So it's one of the two. People have him as this huge betting favorite. Let's see if he rises to the occasion and do what he's supposed to do. And then last thing, you, you, you sort of talked about the rivalry and you feel like there's a chance that even down the road you guys will fight again. I know you have a lot of fighting left in your career. You're far from done. But when your career is done, do you feel like when they write the Aljamain Sterling autobiography, there's going to be multiple chapters on this rivalry with Piotr Jan? Do you think he'll be your greatest competitive rival? Possibly. I think the, the whole storyline with everything – um, the way he leapfrogged me over something that he didn't deserve or earn, um, I, I think I think there's a lot that to unfold in uh, our history with each other. So I, I'm excited about it, and just however this fight goes, I, I really do think I'm going to run through this man. And um, like I said, people think he's good. When I, if, I, if and when I run through him, what are people going to say about me? I mean, do I become the greatest of all time? You know, you know what I mean in, the, in this division. Uh, I don't know. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of histories to still be written, a lot of fights to still be had, and uh, this is just another one on, on the checklist. Not a man. Uh, Jimmy, just real quick. You mentioned that uh, at some point you didn't even think you'd, you'd do a, another training camp. Can you give us some details with maybe some examples? How bad did it get, uh, the whole situation with your neck? Well, I think the easiest way is to go back to my sparring sessions with Marab, and uh, he's an animal. He's a machine for the reason, but um, we have we normally have very very competitive and high level, high output sparring sessions and even grappling. And for me to only be able to go around with him and then literally fatigue where I can't even really keep my arms up uh, and push because I'm exhausting myself. I'm not exhausted myself. I am exhausted in the second round, second and third rounds. It's um, it's not fun, you know. So that's not really a motivating feeling. And uh, to know what you're capable of doing, knowing what you have done in the past, and to be where I am now, at the best way I could describe this training camp is just to me a blessing, man. Because again, the music stops at some point. I thought it stopped for me, and uh, I thank God that I, I'm back in this position because I was really starting to look at like other options of things that I might have to fall back on. You know, I got my real estate, I got my three houses. Um, I do my podcasting, I do other things and break down fights and all that stuff. So it really put things in perspective. Like one day this can all just be taken away and one injury, you know, for, for all of us. And uh, I worked really, really hard to get back to this point in my life and uh, I can't wait to compete. It's a, it's a very, now I feel motivated. I was starting to become not uh, resentful, but like, deflated, just like, man, I don't know if this is going to happen for me. I don't think it's back in the cards for me. I know people were saying that. I shouldn't have gone there. I'm not going to be the same. I tell you what, I'm past the same. I'm, I'm way past that. I'm way better. And uh, I think the physique shows it. Good luck. Thank you. I'll just down here on your right. So uh, 
Zhang Wenli said before UFC 268 that while she was sparring, her teammates would heckle her to simulate the fight night experience of being booed heavily. Uh, have you done anything similar to prepare for this? I just envisioning it, you know. I, and I'm one of those guys, like, when I was wrestling in high school and college, we have dual meets. Our team versus your team. Your squad versus my squad. Each weight class. One guy goes out, you either win or you lose, and then you move on to the next belt. And for me, being the next guy after one of my training partners, I'm either going with the momentum of a loss or with a win. So you kind of have to battle those emotions, and you never really know what it's going to be unless you're – Rusting a, a really bad team, you know, you're just going to steamroll them. But um, so for me, I relish in the moment of being booed. I relish in the moment of being cheered. They, for me, I just envision it all. I'm like, I walk through, did my walkout, boo. I'm like, yeah, let's go. That gives me energy because it makes me want to go that much harder. And if you're cheering for me, it makes me want to go that much harder. So it's, it's nothing about uh, – I know for her she was affected the first time with uh, with Rose, and I don't know why, but – Everyone's different, you know. Some people have never felt that before, but for me, I've, I've had to deal with that all the time. People talking shit while we're playing basketball. People talking shit all the time. So we're ball bosses, man, here in Long Island. So it's, uh, it was relatively easy for me to kind of put myself in that situation. Whether or not that's going to feel different when I'm making that actual walk, who knows. But I feel like I'm more than ready for any of that. All right. Thanks, Aljo. Thank you. Good to go. Long live the king, baby. Long live the motherfucking king. Yeah! Yeah!